Okay, so most people are asking me, Andrew, how do you maintain your energy level? How come you're always so excited when your guests are on your podcast? Everyone is excited and wow, they just seem like they just don't want to get off. How do you do that? Well, I think I have seven things that I do on a daily basis that I can share with you. And I think that there are seven life hacks that if you apply to your life, it will help you to maintain your energy level. And not only that, it will help you to feel more good about yourself, more excited about yourself, more enthused about the things that you do in life. So if you're ready, my name is Andrew E. Guy, work life integration coaching consultant, and I have seven life hacks that you can apply to your life so you can get the best out of life. If you're ready, let's talk about it. It's the moment you've been waiting for. It's a conversation that must be had today and not tomorrow. Welcome to another episode of I'm Listening, I'm Ready with your host, Andrew E. Guy. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, Andrew E. Guy here, work-life integration coaching consultant and I help professionals and business people To create their greatest impact where they live, work, and play by applying principles that help them to enrich their work and life so they can live life more purposefully by focusing on priority. All right, so today we're going to talk about seven things. Seven things that you can apply to your life today that will help you to maintain your life, work, and life. So that means you can get the best out of life, whether you're working, where you live, and where you play. All right, let's talk about them. We don't waste any time. We're just going to get right into it. Number one, you got to start each day off with gratitude. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you do. You want to start each day off with gratitude. And gratitude basically is whatever attitude you wake up with in the morning, you're going to put a GR in front of that attitude. I don't care what it is. Whatever your attitude is, you get up with in the morning, you're going to put a GR in front of that attitude. And whatever that attitude is, it's going to spell gratitude. That's right. So if you get up in the morning and you have a dirty attitude, it's because there's no GR in front of that attitude. If you put a GR in front of that attitude, you will get gratitude. And therefore, you start thinking about things that you can be grateful for. The next thing I want you to do is get in touch with your creator. Begin each day with a prayer. And most people, when I talk to them about prayer, they think I'm talking about some religion or going to a church to sit down on a pew so someone can speak into their life. That's not what I'm talking about. You can reach God anywhere you are on planet Earth. Long as you're on the same frequency and you're tapped in and you know exactly what to do and you know him. From a spiritual perspective, you can tap in anywhere. You don't have to be in a church building. You can be anywhere. As a matter of fact, any and where is the best place to pray. Any and where is the best place to pray. You don't have to be in a church building. So let's take care of that. Prayer basically is really communication with your creator. You're talking to him about who you are, what struggles you're having, and how that you can improve yourself. That's the person that you are real, you're most real with. Because it's like going to Henry Ford and saying, Henry, I want to talk to you about this Ford that I'm driving. Uh, It's not doing everything that I needed to do. I just want to let you know. But Henry is saying to you, I am the one who created this Ford. I have the blueprint here. So it doesn't matter what area of the Ford you have an issue with. I can help you because I know the Ford best because I am the creator. So the best place to start is to start with your creator, making sure that you're connecting with him to let him know, hey, these are the things that I am aspired to do. These are the things that I am not doing so well and help me to do better in them. That's the best place to start. Number two, we're going to be rolling through this and it's mind your business. Mind your business is another way of saying I need to focus. Focus. You want to eliminate any distractions that come your way, whether they be gadgets and or people. So sometimes you'll get up and the first thing you get on is your cell phone. No, don't do that. Remember, the first thing you're going to do, you're going to start off with a prayer. That's right. You're going to check in with the person that created the blueprint so you can know exactly who you are. Remind yourself of who you are and where you are going. So you got to mind your business. M-Y-B or M-Y-O-B. Mind your own business and making sure that you're focusing on the things 
that you want to get done that day. How do you do that? You start the night before. You start the night before by writing things down that you want to accomplish the next day. And then when you get up, you go hit those things. After praying and giving thanks and being grateful for who you are, what you are. And here's the next part I want to put into that gratitude piece. Don't be thankful for what you got to do. Be grateful for what you get to do because the people who are dead and are six feet under, they don't get to do any of this. They don't get to get up and move about. They don't get to get up and live and breathe air. They don't get to interact with other people. They don't get to do anything. So I don't want you to start focusing on, oh, I got to. No, you ain't got to do anything. You get to do something. So focus on that from a gratitude perspective. We're continuing with number two. You want to get rid of those gadgets and or people that distract you, easily distract you. There's some things that don't distract you. Just leave those alone. But the ones that easily distract you, you're going to have to get rid of those things. All right? Remember I said you want to write down the things that you want to get done on this day. You want to do it the night before. Write down at least five things that you want to accomplish in this day. And then what you want to do is you want to lock in. Lock in, meaning that I am focused. That's all under focus. I want to lock in and set boundaries. I want you to think of yourself as the bi, the lipid bilayer in the cell. From a biological um, perspective, we study the cells and we know that it has a, a, a lipid bilayer, meaning a two-layer. And it's semi-permeable. That means it lets some things in and it causes some things to stay out and some things that are inside the cell, it doesn't allow it to come out. So it's permeable, but it's semi-permeable. It's not 100% permeable. It only lets certain things in and it keeps some things out. And it keeps some things in that it doesn't want to get out into those environments. So that's when you are locked in and be like the cell. The next thing that you want to do is as you locked in to be like the cell and putting up those boundaries... You want to control the flow, control the flow of traffic, control the flow of information coming into your brain via or by way of your ears and by way of your eyes. You want to make sure that you're looking at the right things. You want to make sure that you are listening to the right things. This is why it's great that you tune into this podcast, the Isla podcast. I'm listening. I'm ready because it is the podcast that's dedicated for those who are on the go. Whether you're traveling by land, air or sea, this is me. Andrew E. Guy. And my goal is to help you get you to where you need to be in life and take you from where you're coming from. All right. So this is what we're talking about. Number two, we're just talking about focus. Mind your own business and lock in. Get rid of the gadgets. I want you to write down the five things that you want to accomplish in this day, the night before. And then after you lock in, you want to set those boundaries. And I want to make sure you think of the cell in creating those lipid bilayer And what you're doing is you're trying to filter out the things that you don't want and the things that you want to keep in. You want to keep those in and you want to control traffic. Where is the traffic flowing that's coming into your thinking, your thought space? You want to control those traffic. The next thing that you want to look at for number three, you want to make sure that you find a sharpener. What in the world is a sharpener, Andrew? Sharpener, think of yourself as a pencil. And in order for you to have a point to make so you can write the vision to make it clear, you need to go through a sharpener. A sharpener is a process that keeps you exactly what it says, keeps you sharp, keeps you focused. And so in order for you to get sharp, you have to go through a sharpener. A sharpener can be a group that you actually hang out in. Sharpener could be a group of people and or a coach and or a mentor that keeps you sharp, that makes sure you keep focused on the things that you say you want to accomplish. That's the sharpener. The sharpener is not going to be a friendly thing. The sharpener is not going to be um, your best friend. The sharpener can be your nemesis. Your sharpener could be something that you just dislike. You hate it, but you love it. Like me, I hate running, but when I'm finished running like my 10K or my 12K or I'm on my 15K, I know that my body is benefiting from this. I don't like it, but my body likes it because of the benefits that it gets, all right? So you want to find a sharpener, and it's something that sharpens you. You also want to make sure that within the sharpening time, you want to start focusing on maintaining those networks. Maintaining those networks are those relationships that you know that are important to you, making sure that you're maintaining those because now you're sharpening, you're in those areas or in those group or focus groups 
that is helping you to stay focused on the things that are most important to you. All right. The next thing that you want to do for number four, you want to focus on your finance, focus on your health and focus on your family, finance, family and health. That means you want to go back and check to see how is your money doing. Check your bank account because a lot of times most people don't check their bank accounts and banks end up charging them unnecessary fees or there may be a withdrawal that they weren't um, privy of. So making sure that you're checking your finance. Check your finance and then you want to make sure you're checking with your family. Make sure everybody knows What's up? Check in with them. If you got to go into that next person's room, knock on the door, check to see if they're in there, if they're sleeping and if they're sleeping, if they're resting instead of sleeping for good. And how you do that? You check to make sure they're okay. You tap them to, hey, you all right? And you check in, make sure family is okay. The next thing after you finish that is that you want to go out for your fitness. That means you want to put on your jogging shoes and your runners and get out there and get a good walk, a good brisk walk and or you just go for a good run, all right? So you're going to focus on your health. Either you're doing breathing exercise, running, and or some stretching exercise. Whatever you do for your health and well-being is the act of wellness. That's what it is, okay? So make sure you tap into that family, finance, and your health. That's his number five. So let's go to number six. You want to work in your strength. Work in your strength, meaning that you're not focused on your weakness. You know you do have weakness, because we all do. So you want to focus on your strength. That means focus on the plus instead of the negatives. Focus on the wins instead of the failures. Focus on getting, making sure that you understand who you are. Making sure that you understand your skills, your skill set, your expertise, your area that you're talented in and develop those areas because I guarantee if you focus on your strength, your weakness will take a back door and they will take a back seat and all of a sudden they will be diminished and you're not even seeing them. They're not even visible anymore. So focus on your strength. All right, let's go to number seven. Number seven says be time conscious. Be time conscious. That means you want to review your actions at the end of the day to see what you have done. If you review what you have done for the day, you know what areas you didn't get complete. You know what areas you need to work on. You know what areas you need to put more energy and more emphasis in. The next thing you want to do underneath that sub-editing of number seven, you want to understand what mood you're in. You want to understand your energy flow because, you know, Lisa Nicholson once said that energy goes where energy flows, but you want to understand at what point of the day you're at your highest or at your best. Are you a morning person or you're an afternoon person or you're an evening person or you're a night owl just like me? I do my best work between one o'clock and four o'clock in the morning. That's when I'm trucking. That's when I love to be there because everyone else is sleeping and I don't have to worry about anyone interrupting me. It is just a peaceful time to crank out all the stuff that I need to get done. All right. So those are the seven top life hacks that I use on a daily basis to help me to maintain my energy, to make sure that when I am around people, I'm giving them my best. The reason why I say that is because, and I want to add this too. Let me go ahead and add this bonus for you. Number eight would be to make people feel that you're interested in them. When when you're talking to somebody, um, talk with them, not to them, but talk with them. Make sure they feel that you are the most important person in the world. They, Not you, but they are the most important person in the world. That means you're paying attention to them. You are listening in a way that makes you feel that you're going to have a quiz at the end of that listening experience because they never know what somebody else will ask you once you finish a conversation. And so what I want you to know is to understand that if you give people your full attention, guess what? It enriches the conversation and makes for an even greater experience. My name is Andrew Guy. I am the author of Work Your Words and Finding Your Pathway to Personal Success, author of The Anatomy of the Kingdom and the Power of Community, Exchanging Religion for Function a life of function and purpose. Please get out there and get those copies of those books. Amazing book, great tips, great life hacks that you can apply to your life. I would love to connect with you. Until then, I want to encourage you to go out there and subscribe to our channel and look us up on YouTube. Take care. Talk soon.
Until next time, keep listening, live ready, talk soon.